masters of horror. Welcome to the Scariest Things Podcast, your gateway to the trends and tropes of the horror genre. This is Spooky Time, number 19, with jazz hands. <laughs> that wasn't even planned, folks. That Spooky was... hands. <laughs> and with me today, we've got Mr. Eric Lee down in Portland. Hello, hello. And Ms. Liz Williams over there in wherever you are, New, New Orleans. Orleans. Yep. Yeah, this, Hello. This back at home. Yes, back, back at, at home. home. That's right. Last time I was in the mountains. Hi, guys. And Liz hey. has something for us. I do. Something I'm going to kick it off. We're going to jump in. We don't have Mike. He's still in the jungles, but I have seen fa- uh, social media evidence that he's alive. So we don't worry, folks. Life. We have proof of life. Yeah, we have, this is we not have a, a Green Inferno uh, situation. <laughs> green Inferno. Oh, no. Yeah. That's what I said. I was like, don't watch Green Inferno before you leave. Uh, sorry. Okay. So I have two things tonight. One is the image behind me, if you're on our YouTube. It is for a film that Joseph Perry already reviewed for our site two months ago for the Fantascoa uh film festival which is a brazilian film festival this is a spanish film called the coffee table um as soon as joseph saw this he sent me a message saying you got to check this out it's in the running for feel bad film of the year it's There's like this year's uh this it's right a horrible your movie you're gonna love it uh it's this year it'll make you no cry evil. and wretch and, yes yeah you right. thought, just, of, you uh, thought curl of those up. immediately and he thought of me. And so <laughs> when I got a press release, I was like, oh, this is the one Joseph was talking about. I got an email and say that I need a screener. Turns out Joseph already reviewed it for our site and we are blurbed in their press release, which is oh, super nice. nice. Hey. Um, and but I was still given a screener to talk about on the uh, podcast. So this is called The Coffee Table. It is directed by Kaye Casas. And it's described as a beyond horrific tale. It's about a middle-aged couple who are blessed with a newborn baby who buy a gaudy coffee table. And it's a decision that will dramatically change their lives. Um, And without much on-screen violence, Casas delivers a terrifying, almost unspeakably pitch black horror film. And I am not going to tell you any twists, but it starts out as a hilarious comedy the scene when this couple is buying the coffee table i could picture myself having these conversations with my husband throw a newborn (laughs) baby in and like she's like just get this damn ugly table and let's get out of here you know i'll told you so and it just um much like speak no evil just is real funny until it's not and it's (laughs) wonderful and it is going to be making its U.S. film premiere at a big festival in September. So I am guessing that is Fantastic Fest. But mm-hmm. it will also be on DVD and VOD in January. So we will keep you all up to date on it. But this will 100% be on my top 10 list. There's no way that wow. okay. there's going to be that many other films. So my second piece of info is also international. And this is that oh. the Fantasia International Film Festival just released its third wave of programming. Mm. And my list of things I want to see now has 29 films on it. <laughs> uh, finding a film I... festival sometimes with five things that you want to see is hard. I have 29 uh, things I want to see. That's a massive film festival. No sleep for Liz. No sleep. Well, <laughs> lucky for the people who are going to attend this, it is three weeks long. It runs from July 20th to August 9th in Montreal. So you said you said there's 21 films that you want to see? 29. 29. Oh, God, that's more than one a day yeah, for that three I weeks. I want to see. I've already <laughs> seen one because I said right. I better start with the screeners right now and get mm. those reviews up and let schedule before the embargoes but i wanted to touch on a couple things that they released in their third wave of programming including that nicholas cage is going to get kind of a career achievement award and um he is world premiering his new film that is called sympathy for the devil finally Mm -hmm. they're taking 
Nicolas Cage seriously and awarding him for his Nicolas Cageiness. The oh, world is mm. on board. After years of being like, this guy's too much, you know, with Mandy, go, then mom and dad, and then the yeah. unbearable weight and massive talent, he's finally getting his due. Um, and then just a couple other films that I'm really excited about is Vinegar Syndrome is debuting wow. a production that they put together called Eight Eyes. Um, and it is being billed as a hard, shocking um, film. So I'm ready for that. It's going to be a world premiere. And it says at the breaking point of a dysfunctional marriage, Cass and Gav take a trip through Serbia. And after meeting a mysterious local, St. Peter, who eagerly offers to be their guide, the couple embark on an impromptu sightseeing, sightseeing expedition that soon takes a series of sinister turns. So, mm. yeah. It the movie goes to Serbia. It's never so I know. Say, That's what I said. I was like, said Serbia, you, you it's like, this Serbia? is going to be rough. Bad oh, idea. It's another hostel or something. Uh-huh. And then another <laughs> yeah, Serbian one. Serbian tale. The, oh. No, I'm never going to watch that one. Um <laughs> Another one that I'm Liz has of, a bridge too far, folks. That it's is, hard to believe, but Liz has Liz a bridge too to far. Oh, well, if you read what happens in that film, I, I think it should be anybody's bridge too far. Yep. Um, there's a documentary that they're going to show that is called Home Invasion. And it says it's made in bed during the pandemic by a playful experiment named Graham Arnfeld. It's one of the most chilling cinematic experiences of the years. And it's a nightmarish essay film doubling as an experimental horror film framed through an oppressive peephole. This genre defying documentary <laughs> takes the viewer from the invention of the doorbell to the arrival of the ring, showing how history uh, uh, intertwines with film technology. And it's oh. made of a mix of archival um, films and security footage and things from ring doorbell. So this reminds me, Eric, a lot yeah, of what yeah. we saw at the overlook, the uh, ring, ring, a doorbell fantasy which was so much fun so yeah um, that that one is real life incidents yeah. that happen at your front door yeah. that you really can't unsee so, there yeah it's like stranger shows up to your to your house and with an ak-47 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a, a drunk was in guy Florida. in a clown costume who's showing up on your porch yeah like, oh god and then uh, you'll be able to see a bunch of other things that we've seen at some other festivals, like the documentary Satan Wants You. You'll be able to see mm -hmm. Onyx the Fortuitous. And there's one that premiered nice. at um, South by Southwest called Raging Grace that I reviewed for the site Ooh. and gave four stars to that's going to okay. show there also. Um, nice. So if you are in the Montreal area for one, two or all three weeks, definitely check out this festival i That's don't think crazy. you have to go for every three single weeks. day of those three weeks probably it probably so is some, That's amazing. at some point we're going to have to do the extended vacation yeah. montreal trip I can't, go for vacation. Three, I can't watch movies for three weeks four <laughs> days at south by and four yeah. days at overlook three it, weeks of yeah. 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 Uh, pretzels and cheese cake. i think yeah, yeah i can't Pop eat the alamo does not have enough pretzels to support <laughs> me being there for three weeks <laughs> Because then uh, popcorn frights, I think Robert has been posting uh, both of the waves that have come out, and that's a fourteen-day yeah uh, festival. Yeah. Also, well, that one's that's all in horror. Fort Lauderdale. You got to be inside in the air conditioning, so True. I don't, I don't right. blame that. Yeah, it's Fort Lauderdale in August, right? Yeah, yeah. Fort Lauderdale yeah. And, and Miami. They have a yeah. couple of things in Miami. Oh, wow. like the only okay. place I would rather be less than New Orleans in August is fl Southern Florida. In yeah. <laughs> all right who's going next all right i think that would be me um sort of following up on um kind of current events i um i i just went out and i saw a non-horror movie that was very good after liz had commented that you and your nephew uh, who, whose name is jackson jackson went yes. to go see spider-man yes. uh in in the um across uh, the spider -verse. across the spider-verse yeah. which was a amazing mm -hmm. spider-man um yeah. uh, but in the preview i got a preview of haunted mansion <gasps> yes. and that looks folks that looks funny yeah it looks that looks funny. good yeah. that looks i it looks i'll I, that, i'll that go pay some money to see for that. sure oh totally so this is because uh, if you recall we just had our uh scariest things um uh, thingy awards mm -hmm. and we were lacking in good gateway horror um, there's probably nothing better than something like Haunted Mansion for bringing 
preteen kids to go see something spooky and fun mm-hmm. and actually funny. Mm-hmm. It's still mm-hmm. PG thirteen, so there's still it comes with some caution flags, but right. mm-hmm. uh, it it looks. You know I, the 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 bits that I saw in the the great trailer. So and the cast is great too. They've yeah, got an and that's com- that's that's coming that's coming out soon. You won't mm-hmm. miss it. It'll it'll it. I think Disney is banking on this to be a big hit. Yeah. So um, that's interesting. Uh, another movie that's coming out soon that is on the opposite sliding scale of this thing is Amityville Poo oh. Killer Poop Two. Oh, like no. Winnie the Pooh or like. Poop poo. It's got a, the the image is a a a a ghostly poop in the toilet. Jesus. No, and the top of the lid has the Amityville house on the back side of the toilet lid. Folks, I can't. I don't know how it came down to this. How did it's, it come down what, to this? What did we do wrong? I don't it's, know. That's due in 2024. So um, eagerly anticipating hey. that one. Yeah. I don't know. I think this I, is I, I probably the writer's the next, strike. This will be on the next wheel because, of misfortune. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> we could, if we had put Amityville on, that person would be like, "All right, in 2024, I'll rejoin after I've watched." I think there's oh, like yeah. 40. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 one might have been more than uh, uh, Puppet Master. It's twice as much as Puppet Master. At le- at least. Easily, yeah. At it's least. huge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyways, I just thought sort of on op- opposite ends of the taste spectrum, yeah. those things are coming up, um, uh, and I just and figured I'd have to come in on that. But um, my main topic today is actually sort of the imagery that I've got for uh, for those of you who are watching on our video stream. Um, uh, Bouchon International Fantastic Film Festival. Um Robert Joseph and I have all been watching screeners. I don't know. Do you know if Joseph's actually there for this? I don't uh, know no. actually. Yeah, uh, I would hope so because it's because yeah. yeah, it's because Bouchon is not too far out. It's like a, I think it's a suburb of Seoul. Seoul. Yeah, oh, you live there, right? Yeah, it's like forty minutes out of Seoul or something like that. It's yeah. not that far. So hopefully Joseph has, was able to get. It's a big festival. It's, mm-hmm. it's got a ton of movies, but it is. It, it, it's probably more like a fantastic fest out in Austin where it's more than just horror. Um, right. is, is fantastic, mm-hmm. fantastic fest. Fantastic cover, fest like... is all genre. Fantasia is more than just horror though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Fantasia. So maybe like Fantasia. Yeah. I would uh, think. Very, very international um, stuff. And, and uh, they had, oh my gosh, so many films, but there's a limited amount that they give for streamers. Yeah. Um, so so we've been doing our best to try and pick up on on and those the first year they've been done killing it. yeah they yeah. haven't been doing it for uh international uh coverage so yeah right right on the and cutting so, edge serious things. so yeah. i get to be in fact i am number one on the imdb posting page for life of mariko in cabochico uh, is that is, is, do, you, yeah. do you know is that is that is it cabochico is that how you, sure. or is it kabuki cho i don't know ah. um I asked the guy who was in Tokyo for a year and a half. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, ah. it's, um, did you ever go to that to to uh, in Shinjuku? Um, the red light district. There. Red light. Yeah. Um, no, it's, but it, it's, but that it's, the, it's more than just. It, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it is. It is the red light district, full of, full of the, uh, the love hotels and the uh, the, the the dance clubs, but yeah. it's also restaurants and and casinos. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah. It's, yeah. It's a, Shinjuku is a it fun is, place. It is like pre pre Rudy Giuliani Times Square kind of thing, right? <laughs> or or nicer. it's like the the, yeah. the, the the tenderloin in San Francisco. It's still nicer. Um, <laughs> it's but still nicer. <laughs> yeah, it's like, people I, have very good yeah. planners. <laughs> um but this is I love this movie. Um this this movie it's it's tangential to horror, but it's tangential to a lot of things. Mm. It's uh it's it's sort of a um it reminds me of a Quentin Tarantino or a Jim Jarmusch movie where you have multiple stories connected to through this thread of um, a character named Mariko, who is a as de- a bartender and a, uh, de- a detective in the heart of uh, Kabuchiko um, uh, and a uh, Kabuki Chico. Kabuchiko? Kabuchiko. Kabuchiko. We'll go with Kabuchiko. Yeah. Kabuchiko. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, the, that she has, she's sort of the neighborhood watchdog, 
dog. Um, she sees, she knows everybody in the neighborhood. Everybody comes to her for advice and including my daughter is missing or there's a rumor of an alien in a basket <laughs> that, 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 that the Yakuza and the FBI of all groups wants to come in and find, find this escaped scientist with an, an, uh, a, uh, an alien in a basket. There's a story of her best friend who's fallen in love with a, a pretty young gigolo and she wants to earn a lot of money and she thinks she's going to earn a lot of money by capturing a serial killer for the reward, reward money. Um, also a couple of her bar, the, the people who, who go to her bar are sisters who are assassins and one's trying to get out of the, out of the system and they, and they have a fight over a man. Um, and, <laughs> Uh, there's a lot there's going a, on in this movie. Yeah, there's yeah. A, and there's a there's a there's a sad sack janitor working in one of the love hotels who used to be a mob heavy who's who lost his daughter who now apparently has become a porn star. It's all just it is you know a day in the life of Japan, right? Sure, um, sure. And it's all tied beautifully with this thread of Mariko. I thought she was terrific. It was it is one of those things where it's not, it, it's a. Um, a surprisingly feel good movie. Pause. It looks. So, little technical glitch. We're back, and uh, just would um, do a full recommendation for Mariko, uh, Life of Mariko in uh, Kabuchiko. Uh, and I've said that five times differently now. So yeah, that's all right. take it for what it is. You're just covering um, all the bases. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is. It is. It is horror adjacent, but it is. It's. It is a wild, fantastical story. Um, and it. There's. I mean, it is. It, it does get pretty bloody. There is a serial killer with a butcher knife, <laughs> and there are like uh, yakuza hit jobs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and believe it or not, it all makes sense. It's like it is like a, in, in that way. It's like a Tarantino movie mm -hmm. where everything kind of circles around, and then you go, "I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it." You, you, it always, unlike sort of an anthology, which kind of throws like spaghetti at the wall, and it's like we're kind of loosely connected. It's all right. very tightly connected. Um, the the second movie that I that I wanted to comment on is uh, a movie called The Seeding. Which is an actually it's an American movie by uh, a director named Barnaby Clay who has made most of his reputation off of music videos and you can sort of tell mm -hmm. in the way that he shot the film. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful cuts. Um, it takes advantage of uh, a, the Utah desert really well. But to me, this feels like almost kind of like a fairy tale, a dark fairy tale where it's hardwired into our systems about there are reasons why you you do certain things there's the um the the protagonist is a guy named uh Wyndham Stone played by Scott Hayes and he's a photographer going out to take um pictures at a total eclipse and he is um lured out into the desert by a boy who says he's lost his mom and dad in the and it's like, what do you don't yeah. don't this kid doesn't look like he's lost. And when he runs away from you and he smirks, that's a bad sign. And then when all of a sudden <laughs> he go pours back your, to the car. Where, where he pours yeah. your bottle of water out. And the thing was that he doesn't make it back to his car. And so he stumbles around and he finds this crater in like an oasis at the bottom. And there's a little house and there's a ladder that goes down into this crater. He goes into the crater, finds a young woman who is fairly nonplussed to see him offers him but she offers him dinner and rest and i was like hmm is he giving off dinner? kind of yeah. hansel and gretel vibes here it's like <laughs> kind of was yeah replacing replacing the candy and 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 gingerbread with sexy young woman as the lure and and it's like red flag should be up he doesn't follow the red flags when he wakes up in the morning the ladder is gone. He's stuck at the bottom of this canyon pit. And then there's these wall, these wall paintings of like a woman, a snake woman and beheadings and stuff. It's like, that's a, that's red flag number two. And he goes, but he's a photographer and he goes, that's interesting. And he takes pictures of it. It doesn't, he doesn't start thinking I'd better get out of here. He kind of tries to figure it out. He doesn't get out. He's trapped. And then around the rim the boy who he followed is 
joined by a cadre of other feral boys that sort of it's it's kind of um the the uh lord of the flies kind of things like oh man trapped in a canyon by a bunch of by a bunch of feral thuggish kids and <laughs> and because he every time he tries to to climb out they 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 force him back and uh so it's like well is is the woman trapped in there with him is she the source of everything is what's going on here it's it it is it's kind of cool because you feel like you're always one step ahead of him he's kind of a dim bulb truthfully yeah. I think um, so too. Yeah, and, but feel like but I, you're but yeah. you're still I've half a step that from him. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're half a step behind the plot because you think it's like it could branch this way or it could branch this way. There are a number of times where it could change things up. The ending is rough. Um, right. It is a um, not bloody, but it's emotionally rough. Yeah. Um, and um, the you know it th there are so many things that and again. I think humans are hardwired from being from being little children. It's like, don't you know the stories? Of don't you know, don't stray off the path or mm -hmm. the modern tale of, hey, where'd I park my car? <laughs> you know, or, or Dude, where's hey, my I car? don't have cell phone. That Dude, modern tale. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like those are those are things. Those are modern fairy tales of the horror stories of I. I don't remember where I parked and now I'm searching the entire parking garage, except for this time that you're in a desert. And if you wander out in the wrong place, you're going to, you know, die of dehydration or evil. And um, this is, this is the case where evil come evil, evil comes out to greet him. It was um, a super cool set though. I mean, that location. Yeah, the pictures. It is, uh, it is, it's, that, it's a gorgeous movie. The ground. That was, that was yeah. a great find. Yeah. Although I, you know, as a, as a gym climber, I was thinking, that was like a five seven. I think I could do that without ropes, uh, <laughs> except for when you have a bunch of hostile kids who are going to like throw rocks at you or throw something like that. At you, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, oh no, no, makes it more difficult. <laughs> like, that's not gonna. That's not gonna work. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was. It is kind of the the uh, the warning to all of us: be careful. <laughs> like, uh, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. This is not an oasis. I'm so, also just gonna stay out of the desert. Yeah, so those were the two big. The, That's how I the, avoid these problems. I'm gonna stay yeah, I mean, it is. It is. Yeah, the, yeah. There's like hills have eyes, or 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 tremors, tremors monsters. Robert can tell us Robert all about that in a few months. All about tremors. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that would be that would have been awesome if there was all of a sudden that he was like a sacrifice for some tremor monsters. I would have been totally down for that. <laughs> would be um, like Tremors Nine, like Robert, you have another movie to yes. watch. <laughs> Trem Trem Tremors, Tremors Nine, the seeding spinoff. Um, the seeding two. So uh, that that those were both those were two good horror offerings, and then uh, the quickly there was a third movie called Siri Asi, which is a superhero movie okay. that was done in Indonesia by Joko Anwar, one of our really? favorite horror uh, directors. That's it's cool. really good. It's okay. um, It looks like you could put this one in the American market and it would do pretty well. Uh, granted, it feels a lot like Wonder Woman, right? There's it's Well, a, with like RRR and Polite Society, we're all, we're looking for, you know, yeah. things like that. So yeah. mm -hmm. like, give it this to is, us. I think the production values. I think what I, what I would say is that, that you know the, you got multiple layers of villains. You have a you have a great coming of age, um, young woman becoming a goddess essentially. But Indonesia, they they teach their their actors how to fight. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. This is like this is this is like the the, the raid crew teaching this act. Like this this actress can kick ass and she is great. Um, <laughs> So, you know, if you want to see a martial arts heavy Indonesian, and she's gorgeous Always. too. I mean, it's like, so it's like those, yeah, the, the, uh, that Indonesian uh, complexion. Mm -hmm. She's, yeah, she's something. And, uh, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's probably, it bridges the edge of PG 13 and R. Uh, but it is, but I think for teenagers, great fun. Um, not a horror movie, but it was part of the Fantastic Fest. And uh, I think it's 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 interesting because you don't really see you see all kinds of other genres, but it's hard for the other countries. Like I can't think of Japan coming out with like a like a classic traditional superhero thing. But mm -hmm. um, they've also mm -hmm. I guess Joko Anwar had done, there was another comic edition which was sort of their version of Superman, 
but they you know but they have the uh they go through the, the rituals are very different it's very, it's, it's very, it's cool. so um uh, siri asi uh when it when it comes out that is uh it i'm hoping it has rrr like reaction it has you know if they're gonna be putting it out in the states it's so I I don't know. I mean, it's like, oh, okay. you, you've seen, you've seen the same by fan stuff. You don't, you get, you get a, a synopsis and go. Right. Yeah. And, and so you have to, you is often questionable. Yeah. The, <laughs> so the synopsis for the seating had some things that aren't, don't happen in the, in the yeah, movie. That's what um, I noticed too. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute. That, that's not that, right. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, recommendations for all three. I saw one that uh, I didn't like so much, but I won't talk about that one. I fell asleep and it was just like, oops. Yeah, it was a Lebanese movie where it was supposed to be like cannibals and stuff. And it's like, I should have known I, that not to do the cannibal thing, but it was boring. You fell asleep on the cannibals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that. that so that's my um, by fan experience. And Robert also did a little bit of by fan, but he's got that and other things to talk about. Yep. I do. I do. I will I will segue from Bifan with another Bifan movie. Uh the Oh shit. As, you can what happened? Okay, time out. So yes. The the uh picture behind me, if you happen to be watching us on, on YouTube, uh Mr. Stephen King here. Uh there was a documentary at Bifan called called King on Screen. And it oh, was yeah. very, very good. Yeah. Uh, if you like documentaries. Um, and you like so, Stephen King. And if you like Stephen King, uh, they together. Yeah. They went through um, pretty much everything. Like the first um, third of the movie were was maybe they kind of glossed over the first, like they did Carrie and a couple of the other, or the the initial ones, and then they went did like a deep dive as soon as they got to the Shining um and uh and um Shawshank Redemption and the Green Mile and all these talking to Frank Darabont and a bunch of the cast members and so there were some really good uh interviews Mick Garris had a lot of good things to say oh, nice. uh, so that's a if you're a Stephen King fan or a fan of any of his movies that's this is one not to be missed I'm so, hoping so how, that how- this will go to like I'm thinking Netflix. They have so much Stephen King content or Amazon. They can fight it out. But what um, I watched this uh, Chattanooga had it as well. And yeah. I just was just blown away by how many freaking movies that are really good that are all like Stephen King properties. Yeah. That guy yeah. is. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of his books. They're just so long and right too much so but i love most of the movies i i watched yeah. the movie yeah. and yeah. it's just amazing how much that guy has churned out in his yeah, uh, yeah. You know, he's even had a bunch career. of terrible movies and yeah. he's still he's still known still more for his them. great movies yeah. Yeah. right <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, exactly. for every dream catcher you have you know you've you, you've got a shiny. Drive. Yeah. yeah it's a great uh it's a great documentary it is they did a really good job i yeah. was very impressed how, how uh, do they do they get all the way up to what's the most recent one they have it or do they get up no. to like dr sleep yeah maybe? they do talk about dr sleep okay mm-hmm. yeah. so dr sleep so, was after it wasn't it they don't talk about the new it's though I, they don't they really don't. talk about it at all no they oh, really? talk a lot about the myth this, this came okay. out in two, in 2022 mm-hmm. so it may be that they that was just what they had to work with yeah um it, supposedly it's going to be released in august August eleventh, okay, cool. it's going to okay. come out uh, video on demand and wherever they yeah. play these things. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's that was I really had a good time with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on a related note, after watching that one, I went back a few years to two thousand seven, and there's a documentary called Just Desserts hmm. that is specifically about the making of Creep Show. Hence oh, my picture. well, there you go. Okay, perfect. And it's also, I mean, it goes from the very, like, the conception of the whole thing all the way through the making of it. They talk about all the wrangling the cockroaches. Uh, they, they interview a <laughs> bunch of the, like, cast members. Uh, Adrian Barbeau is on there, and she's... Uh, one thing I actually did not know until I watched this was that she was married to John Carpenter. Yep. And I didn't know that. She yep. and he was the reason because she got the um, 
uh, she got the role as um, Billy in the in Creep Show as the. I think she she showed up as uh, best horror movie jerks. I think yes, she was exactly. she was on our list for 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 badgering poor Hal Holbrook. <laughs> yes, exactly. Into into making her lunch meat. <laughs> and she almost didn't do it. And so, cause she was like, I don't know. I don't really like horror movies. And Oh, come on. She did. She uh, was in the fog. John Car- Well, that was maybe after though, because John Carpenter oh. was like, no, 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 wait, this is being done by George Romero and he's kind of a genius. So you, <laughs> you need to go do this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there's lots of good uh, interviews with George Romero and Tom Savini uh, and there's even a little bit from like Ed Harris and a few of the other stars. Did Ted Danson did did, cool. did, did did Ted Danson get in on it? He was didn't have an interview, but they had some behind the scenes stuff from Ted Danson. Oh, did they actually wow. bury him up to his neck? They did, but it, not in an actual on a beach. They had a a whole uh, chamber made for him, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they didn't actually bury him up to his <laughs> neck. I can hold my That's breath for a very hair. long time. <laughs> Where did you uh, find this one? Is this on streaming? This is streaming. You can find it um, through Screenbox. Oh, so you okay. can get it through like Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. that kind of area. I think it's also on YouTube, uh, the, their Prime f- subscription service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So, nice. Also oh. very good. I love Creep Show. That was in yeah. my top 20. I don't know. I don't think it. Yeah. Or my top twenty-five. I don't know that. I think it got cut. My my most recent one, but it was in my first list. No, oh. like twenty-three or twenty-four. Yeah, but I still. So talking about the extra stuff that they used to to promote that uh, to p- promote Creep Show, I remember going over to your house, Robert, as a as a kid, mm-hmm. and 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 reading the Creep Show graphic novel. Yeah. So which was very very much. It was it was. It was pretty direct, much direct homage from. I mean, it's probably the most one-to-one kind of a uh, uh, a graphic novel as there, as there's been for a horror movie because they were based on it. It was a, based on a comic style, yeah. like a like a, a panel to panel kind of a thing where you you zoom in with the with so it's pretty with much already storyboarded stars. for you. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. it was perfect, and it was and and I love love those EC comics. My grandmother when when I was. Um, now, this was the great thing of having a grandmother who's a librarian. Oh. She would come back and with like like big thick volumes of the EC EC comics and say, like, "Oh, that's awesome! These that awesome. have were once upon a time banned. Read these." <laughs> and <it> was like, <laughs> "Thanks, Grandma!" <laughs> wow, weird awesome. weird tales. And wasn't that you know, like the fifties? That was the fifties, sixties, okay. right? When when she so um, you know when when she was a a, a young woman. I've been getting into the world that's of library a, stuff, but that was a collection. That's cool. That is a that was a great collection. I just I remember that. And I was like, I and I, but I think they they she brought them back from the library, and she, mm. they weren't in her house. Otherwise, I would have those would have been part of my inheritance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm taking those. All right. So, awesome. good long spooky time today. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody for listening and watching, and we will see you on the next episode next time bye bye -bye. the masters of horror